Hey guys, and this is Unbelievable Opera Reviews. Today, we're going to review two recordings of Verde Zotello, going back to the beginning. The first one's a recording about which I've talked a lot, from 1961. The second one's a very recent recording, from 2020, with Jonas Kaufmann in the title role. Both of these are controversial recordings. So, the first recording that we're going to review is obviously from 1961, as I mentioned in the intro. Otello is Mario del Monaco, this demon is Renata Zibaldi, and Iago is Aldo Prozzi, conducted by Herbert von Karajan, with the Vienna Philharmonic Orchestra and the Vienna State Opera Chorus. Remember my review of the 1954 recording with the same principles? Well, this one is a million times better. The sound is simply amazing, and the way the singers are mic'd is really immersive. In the Dopolarmi phrase in Desultata, the sound changes in a way that is very satisfying to listen to and makes you feel like you are watching Otello live in the house. This recording also does justice to Tibaldi, whose beautiful voice is captured extremely well. Proti is also mic'd in an almost perfect way. Sound effects are abundant, such as the wind and thunder in the opening scene, sword clangs later in the act, and the cannon shot in Act 3. All of this contributes to an extremely immersive listening experience. The orchestra, the Vienna Philharmonic, is my favorite orchestra, and this recording contributed to that assessment. It provides a sweeping account of the score, playing beautifully and heavily when needed. The chorus has something very unique about it. In the Dio Fulgor de la Bufera chorus, it starts loudly, then gets quieter, and then progressively shifts to a forte again. I have not heard this in any other recording of this opera, and it shows how good the chorus is. It also shows us the swelling power of the ocean. Karajan conducts in a grand fashion that suits the opera very well. He emphasizes the choruses and is best in those areas, but is great in the scenes with not a lot of people on stage as well. The scenes with Otello and Iago are handled especially well. Now let's get to the senior who really makes this recording as good as it is, Delmonico. This is his best Otello in my opinion. He sings very well in Dio mi poteva scagliar, and is the most heroic Otello you can ask for in the heavy scenes while he does a diminuendo in the love duet, and has subtlety when he needs it. His new mitemo is absolutely heartbreaking. He is the closest thing we will ever get to a perfect Otello. Fantastic performance. Tibaldi's voice is sweet, beautiful, and bitingly big when it needs to be, and contributes to the immersive quality of the recording extremely well. Her high notes are comfortable, and her willow song is heartbreakingly beautiful. She has everything that this demo needs, and provides her own sweet interpretation of the role in Act 1, but can lash out in Act 3. She pairs extremely well with Delmonico. Aldo Proti is not the best Iago around, but his performance has certainly improved from the 1954 recording, though that might have been Alberto Herrera's fault. His performance here is almost the opposite of his unsubtle performance there. He sings with Grace and Piani in the Act 2 scene with Otello. This would have been amazing if he had had a little bit more of a beautiful voice. But it is still good, though it's not Milne's. Bastianini was actually supposed to do this recording instead of him, but didn't learn the role in time. Don't worry, folks. Proti is great as well. So, as you can see, the Sotelo is an amazing recording. It has great orchestra and chorus, an amazing conductor, an almost perfect pairing of Otello and Desdemona, and a great Yago. I don't see any reason not to go for this recording and add it to your list. I'll give it a 9 out of 10. So now let's get to the most recent recording reviewed on this channel so far. Jonas Kaufmann's 2020 take on the role. His motivation to make this recording was his 2017 live performances of it. He is a very careful singer, and he sang all the Verdi roles before he was able to take on Mount Everest. Otello is, obviously, Jonas Kaufmann, Desdemona is Federica Lombardi, and Diago is Carlos Alvarez, with the orchestra and chorus of the Academy di Santa Cecilia. Conducted by Antonio Papano. The sound is fairly good, and since it is 2020, I hold it up to much higher standards than the earlier recording. My only regret is that it isn't a multi channel stereo. There are less sound effects by a lot, with the thunder in Act 1 being replaced by a drum. This is a very dry recording in terms of sounds, so there really isn't much to hear there. It's not very ambitious, unlike the last recording. The orchestra is pretty good, as well as the chorus and Papano emphasizes the subtle moments in the score. They don't play as well as the VPO, but they are adequate. The subtle moments, however, are done very well. That's something that goes for not just orchestra and chorus, but pretty much everybody. 
Anyway, Kaufman Zotello is a mixed bag. As a fan of him, I have to say that it isn't the best role for him. However, he does take advantage of the moments in which he can sing piano. In those moments, he really shines. However, his esrultate and cipel cell are rough. They also are a little strained. His nun mi temo and dia mi scaliar, however, are excellent. So overall, his Otello is not the greatest in the world in the heavy moments. However, it's not Vickers, so at least I am grateful for that. In the scene of the subtle moments, I can say that he is one of the best. Federico Lombardi is a standard by the books Desdemona. She does have a few moments of piano, but does not have an especially beautiful voice, and doesn't really do justice to the role. Kaufman's Otello overshadows her a lot in the duet, and she is not very good in the heavy moments. However, at least her portrayal is consistent. I can say that it's not the best, but it's not the worst either. Carlos Alvarez's Yago is appropriately subtle, but it can also be very wobbly, as in the start of Credo. In the duet with Kaufman, he does not really hold his own as well as he could have. A wobbly Yago really tarnishes the performance, and he is almost like Hans Hotter in that regard. Okay, maybe that was a little bit extreme. He is not that bad but he's pretty bad when he wobbles. However, when he does not wobble, he provides an amazing portrayal of the role. He has more subtlety than Proti, and gives the characterization a very nice twist. So, overall, the Sotelo is very standard. It has a few rough moments and some wobbles from the seniors, but when it is not heavy, it is good. However, that kind of defeats the purpose of listening to Otello for me. I'm going to give it a 5 out of 10. The 1961 recording is way better than its predecessor, and the 2020 recording is a little worse than the 2017 live one, in terms of Kaufman's performance. These recordings are pretty much opposites of each other. I would definitely go for the 1961 Otello, and if you are a Kaufman fan, you can try the 2021 as well. Thank you for watching Anmahifa Opera Reviews, and please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you.